Blog Talk Radio. BB's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler. This radio show is dedicated to spreading the truth of God's Word, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful that you are tuning in to our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is brought to you by loving and faithful members of the Churches of Christ. We would ask you to take out your Bibles and study along with us. We have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, you can give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for any of my guests on this broadcast, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Or you can give me a call to Stevie B's Media Production Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. If you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks... Get out your Bibles and stay there along with us here on What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord radio show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B's Media Production Studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. 
So before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will be my special guest speaker, Carlos D. Page, and myself as well as we break on to us the bread of life. We also ask your blessings upon my special guest in the community corner, uh, Alex Scott and Rick Barber, as they serve our communities as well with their various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. We pray that you will bless them and their families that support their efforts as well. Father, we pray that you would bless our listeners who are tuning into this radio show through Blog Talk Radio and also through social media. We pray that they may listen well and that they may consider their eternal stance before you and that their hearts may be pricked and it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending your only begotten son. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we are just so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross. For without such a sacrifice, we would not even have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now, we ask that you would forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of your will. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless us and Keep us and love us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful until death, Father, we pray that you would save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to our broadcast this evening. In the first segment, my special guest speaker will be Carlos D. Page. He serves as the evangelist with the New Heights Church of Christ there in Biloxi, Mississippi. He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And in the second segment in the community corner, I have two guests, Alex Scott and Pastor Rick Barber. And they serve uh, with a nonprofit organization called Men of Integrity here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And in the last segment, I'll be bringing a lesson from the Word of God. I'll be making my proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles now and open your minds and let's have a great show after the break. The next voice you hear be that of my special guest speaker, Carlos D. Page. Enjoy the show. Can 
can do by being there for my rescue. And Lord, I give all I can give. All of my heart, long as I shall live. So Lord, oh Lord, I just want to thank you for coming, for coming to my rescue. You come to my rescue. You come to my rescue. To my Breath gonna let you know
from the Lord Radio Show. Now my special guest speaker, Carlos D. Page, and his subject, We Got to Keep Moving. Amen. Amen. Uh, Just thank you so much, Brother uh, Stevie, for this opportunity to uh, come on the show tonight um, and just give a few few thoughts on uh, uh, in this season of of, uh, things that we've been going through with COVID-19 and just uh, all the calamity that's that's taken over our world, uh, even as we know it. Uh, subject I'm, I'm going to speak from on tonight uh, is we've got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. Um, and I'll be uh, taking this from Exodus chapter uh, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, and we'll start at verse 13. Uh, and we'll move forward uh, all the way down to uh, verse number 18. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 uh, through 18. The Bible says, But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have not seen, whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. As for you, lift up your staff and stretch out, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. The sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. As for me, behold, I will hearten the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and all of his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I am honored through Pharaoh, uh, through his chariots and his horsemen. Tonight I want to talk to you on the subject, we've got to keep moving. We've got to keep moving. And Famous boxer, uh, you all know him as Iron Mike. Iron Mike said once uh, that everybody has a plan until I punch them in the mouth. Everybody has a plan until I punch them in the mouth, and 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 that's significant to me because I realize that uh, we all have a plan that we've set out, or a course that we have set out for, and a trajectory that we've set out for in our lives to. I try to get from point A to point B or try to get from one place to the next. And every every last one of us have a plan that we've placed into practice. Uh, But as soon as life happens, sometimes we get distracted and we get off course. Uh, You might be training for something and and, and, or we might be training for life, rather, uh, just like one would train for a boxing match. Uh, and, And that first the first uh, few minutes of the match, you have a great strategy. You have thought, you've thought it out. You've worked on it. You spent countless hours in the wee hours of the morning and the late hours of the night planning and strategizing on how to accomplish your enemy or how to accomplish defeat over your enemy. But as soon as you get hit in the mouth, you forget everything that you've trained for. I want to suggest to you that life happens the same way. As soon as as soon as soon something that we didn't expect happens, oftentimes we lose our, our, our training, we lose everything that we are prepared for, we lose our thought process, and we begin to act out uncharacteristically. We begin to act out in ways that we, we, we haven't thought out. And oftentimes we find ourselves defeated, we find ourselves going out of the way, We find ourselves being knocked out in the third round because we left our plan. And tonight, beloved, I want to suggest to you that God has given us a plan. We have spent time with the Lord preparing on how we are to accomplish everything that he has set out for us to accomplish in life. And here it is, the children of Israel in Exodus 14 are no different. God has heard the cry of the Egyptians time and time again, and he 
He purposed Moses and he equipped Moses to go un- into the land of Egypt and tell Pharaoh uh, that God wants you to let his people go free. It says after so much deliberation and God had to send plagues up on Egypt that Pharaoh finally decided that, listen, I need my world to get back to normal. So you get these people out of here. I'm paraphrasing, of course, and and, and what, which, what we see happening here in the text is that um, once uh, Moses and the children of Israel began to leave out of Egypt and they began to journey. Uh, the, the, the plan has been laid out. Uh, the strategy has, 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 has been executed, and they are moving forward. And then they get to the place that we often preach from and talk about, the place of the Red Sea. They get to the Red Sea, and they lose hope, and they lose uh, their, their, their plan. They, they forget what they had set out to accomplish, and they're they're now looking as the as the as the uh, uh, the Egyptian army is fastly approaching from the rear. Now they're stuck at a dead end. They're stuck at, at the Red Sea and don't know which way to go. They can't go forward. They can't go backwards. Uh, they don't have a, an escape route. And so the Bible says here in verse 13 that Moses tries to calm the people down. And he says, "Do not fear, but stand by and see the salvation of the Lord." I want to first suggest to you that. Uh, when we are in trouble, sometimes we just need to be we need to be still for a minute, so that God can redirect us, and we allow God to save us. Too many times we've tried to save ourselves, and what we've done in the end is gotten ourselves in more trouble because we tried to handle it on our own. This morning, uh, this evening, beloved, I need to suggest to us that it is time for us to continue to move forward by trusting God. And taking him at his word. If God has delivered you out of one situation, please believe me that he's already strategized on how he's going to get you to a promised land. He's all, if he's taking you from captivity, he's not going to take you from captivity and put you in a worse situation. But too many times we panic in fear because we don't have enough foresight to be able to see what God is doing. Our eyes can only see as far as we can see. But if we trust in God, we can see as far as God sees. And here it is in the text that the Bible says that Moses said in verse 13, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. I need to tell somebody that's listening to me on tonight, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. If it's God's will, he will do it right now. I need to tell you you're more than conquerors, and, and I need to decree and declare to somebody on tonight, that you don't have to wait when it's God's will. It can happen at any moment. You might be on the on the, the next minute of your life, may be the next minute that's going to change the course of the rest of your life. All we got to do is continue to trust God and keep on moving. Here it is, he says, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. A lot of the problems that we are struggling with, a lot of the uh, the disappointments that we've had to deal with, a lot of the people that we've been fighting with, a lot of the jobs that have been uh, keeping us away from our families, a lot of the things that have been disconnecting us from God. If we trust God, we'll, have to ne- we'll never have to be in that moment again. I need to tell you that too many times we keep looking back because we've been hit in the mouth. And because we were hit in the mouth, we're in the days and we're standing in a place of of of, of fear, and we're stuck and afraid to move. So verse 14 says, the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. My next point I need to suggest to you is that while we're busy doing something else, the Lord is already working out for you. We just got to keep moving. The Bible says that the Lord will fight for us while we keep silent. That means we don't need to continue to cry. We don't need to continue to sit uh, 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 idle while we do nothing. Oftentimes we pray, we pray, we pray. And then we do nothing. Well, what I see in the text here is Moses says, while, while we keep silent, the Lord will fight for us. That means we need to be busy doing something else and let the Lord go to work for us. Verse 15 says, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. We have to keep moving. Well, oftentimes we can't keep moving when we don't see the, the uh, a clear path. We don't see a clear path. We don't know how to get out of this moment. But if we just move in faith, 
Because what I understand is that God is moving us from a place of 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 of, of, of faith to a place of sight. Once the children of Israel got in the midst of the sea, they realized that God was working, but in order for God to move back the waters, they had to keep moving so that God could do what he was going to do. The Bible says that as for you, Moses, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and all of his army through his chariots and his horsemen. What I see next in the text, my, my next point that I want to leave with you and deposit it to your spirits on this evening is that everybody has an assignment. Here it is we see in the text that God said to the children of Israel, the sons of Israel, verse 15, you go forward. Moses, you lift up your staff. And he said, as for me, I will harden the heart. So this is what I need to suggest to you on tonight, beloved, as, as we move forward, as we continue to keep moving, as we keep on grinding, I need to tell you that it is our assignment to move. It is our leader's assignment, whoever God has assigned to be your pastor, to be your overseer, to watch over you, to lead you into a place of promise. It is now time for you, leaders, to stand up and lift our rods. And, and stretch out our hands in, in faith and be obedient to what God has called us to be. It is now time to teach your people the whole counsel of God. We got to stop cherry picking the, the word of God and trying to con- indoctrinate people with our own ideologies and our own theology. And we need to get back to the word of God. And we need to stretch out our hands in faith, leading God's people across the Red Sea, leading, leading God's people into a place that they have never been before. Because I need to suggest to you that we're all leading in a space that we've never been in before. And, and, and God said, what I will do while you're moving, children of God, and while your leaders are being obedient, I will work on the heart of your enemy. It is time for us to fulfill our individual assignment. We got to stop pointing fingers. All the Moses is out there. You got to stop pointing fingers at, your, at the people that you lead because they won't move. And, uh, and 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 followers, uh, people of God, if you are underneath a, a leadership, it is time for you to stop pointing fingers at them because they are not doing what you think they ought to be doing because God has told them what to do. Then furthermore, I want to suggest to you that when we do what our assignment is, when we follow the plan, that God will work on the heart. If we just become obedient and keep on moving, leaders keep on leading, Keep on following God. God is going to work on the heart. He said it here in verse number 17. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the uh, of, of the uh, Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Well, I, I believe this to mean that God said I will be honored is because God always requires a sacrifice. Here it is, is that when we see that Abraham uh, was was told by God that he wanted him to offer up his son Isaac. Abraham had to move by faith because God was requiring a sacrifice. I need to suggest to you that Abraham didn't stay stuck in fear. He followed the plan, and God worked on the sacrifice. What I need to tell you is that when it was time for uh, Jesus to go to the cross, uh, my 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 sacrifice, my blood wasn't good enough. Your blood wasn't good enough. We were imperfect, and God had to send somebody that was perfect, and the only one that he could do, the only one that could do it for us was Jesus, his only begotten son. God required the sacrifice of Jesus' blood. And what I need to suggest to you is that because God always requires a sacrifice to move into promise, it really is in the text in Exodus chapter 14 that God said, I'm going to be honored because I'm going to sacrifice Pharaoh. I'm going to sacrifice his armies. I'm going to sacrifice the chariots. I'm going to sacrifice the, the horses. I'm going to get glory because I'm going to, 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 to get what is coming to me. All glory, all honor, all power is going to be given to God. It is up, for, uh, it is up to us to move with faith, move with respect, move fear of God and not in fear of man. 
Here it is, children of God, the children of Israel were stuck in fear because they were watching man. And in, instead, we ought to be moving in fear of the Lord, in faith, knowing that God would deliver us. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I need to suggest to you that if, if we haven't been punched in the mouth yet, then you must have an iron jaw because we've seen things happen to us on every front. And it is time for us to stop looking at what's going on around us and start moving forward with purpose. I saw it on Facebook here uh, today. Uh, somebody posted something that says that uh, a, sink, a boat doesn't sink because of the water surrounds it. A boat sinks because the water gets into it and it begins to weigh the boat down. And the point, the principle, and the point of the of the message was: we got to stop looking at what's going on around us. Because if we look at what's going on around us long enough, and we stop moving, eventually we're going to allow that water to get in, and it's going to cause us to sink. It's going to cause us to sink. Because we're going to lose our faith, being paralyzed in fear. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but He gives us the spirit of love. He gives us the spirit of sound mind. He gives us power. It is time for us to just be moving. I remember ago when I first learned how to use the computer. Every time the computer would freeze, oh, yeah, I remember that I love internet, the AOL, the one that made all the noise when you had to log on. Here, here it was. Sometimes our, our, our connection wasn't good, and it would cause the computer, the CPU, to freeze, and it would cause it to crash. And it, and, and, and it got us to a place that we were just stuck trying to use the internet, trying to use the computer, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't type. We couldn't use the mouse. We could not do anything with that old IBM computer. But then I saw a script one day, and they said, if you get to a place to where you are stuck, all you have to do is hit control and delete. All you have to do is it's going to reset the computer. It's going to reboot the computer and allow you to begin to work again. It's going to allow you to begin to move forward again. It's going to allow you to be, to complete your assignment or the task in which you set out to, uh, to to complete. I need to suggest to you, children of God, as I hate to pull close on tonight, a word from the Lord moment, I need to suggest to you that you have been stuck. Because something around us has has caused uh, uh, or has malfunctioned and caused us to not be able to complete our assignment. But I need to tonight, children, about we have to keep moving. In order for us to keep moving, we need to hit those three buttons: Control, Alt, and Delete. And what I'm trying to tell you is that we got to depend on the Holy Spirit. We got to depend on God the Father, and we got to call out on the control of the elite in our lives so that we can complete our assignment, continue to move forward with purpose. And what I need to suggest to you is that when you hit control, you will learn how to control yourself. When you hit the alt button, you will learn what repentance means, and we will begin to alter our thinking. And then I need to suggest to you that when you hit that delete button, you will start deleting some people out of your life that is causing you to be hindered from God's given purpose in your life. It is now time for us in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to hit control of the league and control our actions, alter our thinking, and delete some people who is causing us to be paralyzed by fear where we can no longer move forward with faith. Children of God, tonight I want to suggest to you it is time for us to move while we continue to cry out to God when God has always already made provision. Keep on moving and keep on moving with faith. Don't abandon your plan because you've been hit in the mouth. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Mike Tyson said it best. If Mike Tyson said it, you know when he said his plan wasn't working, he improvised. He bit this man's ear off. And I remember reading somewhere where one of the disciples heard the man's ear off. And Jesus said, no, we don't have to do that. And he healed the man's ear. What I'm trying to suggest to you is that if we move forward and, 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 and stick to the plan, God has already worked out the promise. Beloved, tonight I hope, it, I hope, trust, and pray that you've been encouraged by this word from the Lord. May God bless you and may God keep you in the perfect portals of peace. We now commend you to work to the word of 
we now commend you to, to our God, to God, and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. May the devil chase you every day of your life, and may he never catch you. God bless you. Is your congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific need. It's an exciting time for your congregation, and what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665 or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, I will not make it any I will not be making any public announcements until further notice regarding the public meetings of assemblies, but I will be making announcements regarding events and activities here on social media. On Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a nationwide gospel call that is sponsored by the Churches of Christ in Highland Heights from Houston, Texas. And that telephone number is 1-857-216-6700. And the access code is 328497. This is a nationwide outreach to those who are not members of the Churches of Christ. The speakers will present a basic salvation message for them to learn what they must do to be saved, and also information regarding the Churches of Christ. In addition, it is intended to edify and strengthen the faith of those who are Christians. And then on Tuesday, beginning on April the 28th, this has already begun, so every other Tuesday, there will be the Dale Crest Church of Christ in San Antonio, Texas, will be presenting a woman's viral Bible class. And that class will start at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can also connect with this class, www.zoom.com. Then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Church of Christ Ministers present the Virtual Sermon Series 101. And the theme will be Timeless Truths in Truthless Time. It'll be live on Facebook and on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, Somebody Must Come Preaching. And for more information, please contact the www.arlingtonroadchurchofchrist.com forward slash www.hilltopcoc.org. And just a program reminder, Stevie B's Media Production presents, we're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. The first Monday of the month, our next scheduled live show will be on July the 6th, the Gospel Light Radio Show. That will be a special edition, and that show will air from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And one of my co-hosts will be presenting the lesson from the Word of God. Also on Tuesday, each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord radio show. And each week we'll have a guest speaker from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ. We'll be presenting a lesson from the Word of God. Also, we have the Community Corner segment. That's segment for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services that they're offering to our community. And also my co-host Lou Gibbons from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Edward Bishop from Niagara Falls, New York, will be presenting lessons from the Word of God on this broadcast. And then on Thursday evening each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And on that show, I have eight co-hosts who will be presenting lessons from the Word of God. And each week, two of my co-hosts will be on the air with me. I'm also taking questions from my shouted out platform on social media, Facebook. That I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on that live show. And then on Friday evening, each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast Radio Show. 
And on that radio show, I'll be playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists. We'll also have the Story Glory segment on that broadcast where I'm actually interviewing the artists that we're playing on that show. And my next scheduled interview will be on July the 3rd. We'll be featuring Vonda Tucker Waller from Greenville, Georgia. Also on that show, we'll be doing an interview with Straight Company. They have a 12-hour marathon show that begins at 12 p.m. that will go till midnight. And on, on July the 4th at midnight, they will be releasing their new album, and we'll be playing a new single on that radio show. And then on July the 17th, we'll be doing the Top 20 Countdown Show for the month of July. And we also have the Marathon Show. That show has not been scheduled, and once I schedule, I will make that announcement. Also, my on-demand episodes, if you can't catch any of these live shows, wherever you're getting your favorite podcast from, just type in your search bar, Stevie B's Media Productions, and you will see all of my on-demand episodes. We have over 500 episodes on the various sites, wherever you're getting your podcast, your musical, plat- musical, uh, musical platform. I like to refer people to Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. Those are the major platforms out there. And also, we're coming soon to Pandora. You can also go to YouTube and pull these shows up. And also, the World of Acapella site, and also on Deezer. And also, mccbroadcasting.com. They'll be airing these shows on Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. And also on YouTube, go to the Church TV Network and see their playlist, Acapella Radio. You should be able to see all of these on-demand episodes. And also, on Acapella acaradio.net and iWave Radio also ibcbroadcasting.com I'd like to give a shout out to all of my sponsors who are sponsoring these radio shows Sharon Norwood, she lives in Chicago Illinois, her company is called Organo, and her first slogan is a health product for healthier living and also Bethesda Memorial Front of Direct Crematory Services from DeSoto, Texas. I also want to give a shout out to Stanley Phillips. He's the owner of a Clifton Class Apparel in Little Rock, Arkansas. So we appreciate him. And my sponsor, Diversified Financial Network LLC from Dallas, Texas. The owner is Mark and Charlotte Carroll. And my sponsor, Cheryl Mara from Charlotte, North Carolina. She's with the Compassion Haiti Leader. And that she's been serving northern Haiti for 20 plus years. And they invite you to become a part of something greater than yourself. So please visit and donate to Haiti at www.compassionatehaitileader.faith. And my sponsor, Yvonne Blazing Cracker Duke from Nashville, Tennessee. Certainly appreciate her. And I have two new sponsors, Melvin Jackson from High Point, North Carolina. His company is called Unique Transportation Auto Car Hauling from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Stephanie Booker Wilson. She has Stephanie Phone Vocal Studios in Greensboro, North Carolina. The three E's of Stevie B's Media Production. It is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, want to edify, we want to encourage you in a study of God's Word. And that will conclude my program announcements. You are listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Stay tuned. Beautiful Oh. Mm-hmm.
like sheep we've gone astray each turn to his own way but Jesus will take our sins away you live for From the Lord Radio Show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the portion of the broadcast where we have the community corner. And this segment of the show is simply designed to just tell our listeners just what products and services are being offered in our communities and how you can contact these various vendors for their services. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised to know just what products and services are being offered. Um, in our congregations from those people who are sitting right there among us. This is one of my favorite segments because we just get to hear just what things that people are doing around us to serve our communities. We've had people on this show who are into financial services, legal services. We've had authors. We've had college consultants, uh, professional boxers um, who are community activists. We've had NFL players, NFL stars. We've had farmers, uh, health and wellness We've had models, and the list just goes on and on. So we just want to make the saints aware of just what are some of the services that are available to them. So in the community corner, we have two guests, Alex Smith and Pastor Rick Barber. They are with a nonprofit organization called Men Integrity. Alex and Pastor Rick Barber, th- welcome to the community corner. Good evening. Hey, how how are, you? are you? Now, are why you don't you... Yes, sir. I'm certainly uh, thankful that you guys are able to join us here in the community corner. Now, why don't you tell us now what it is that you are doing to serve our communities? Okay. Um, again, I'm Pastor Rick Barber, and um, my right hand man is um, Brother Alex Scott. Is his last name, Brother Alex Scott? And so um, we are part of the Restoration Place. I'm the senior pastor of the Restoration Place, um, located at um, 739 Weiss Avenue in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And so we have been um, doing this this ministry, which is uh, not only um, just the men of integrity, but what we have designed and what God has given us to do, and that is to serve our community. Our community okay. is designed to... to um, um, help those that are less fortunate with various needs. I mean, uh, one of the things that, that we do is to feed the community once once a month. And I know that, um, you know, people that are homeless, people that are um, those those brothers and sisters that are living out there on the streets and uh, are not as fortunate as we are, but yet, um, you know, God takes care of them too in various ways. And so, um, you know, the Lord had impressed on our heart to be able to come out um, and, and set up and give them a good meal um, every um, second Saturday of the month. I mean, that's what he's given us to do. Um, I was passing um, today, as a matter of fact, just um, um, just in the area where we normally would serve, uh, someone else was out there serving for them. You know, so God is going to take care of them. I, I would love right. to do more, but we do what we do. And uh, right. so we look forward to, you know, just being out there in the community, being able to give them um, clothing. We'd be able to give them a meal that they can that they can have. And however many come, as long as we have food, um, you know, we give it to them. So that's what God has impressed upon my heart. And um, to bring brothers together um, at, d- during a time when, you know, uh, many times brothers want to be able to, 
uh, with, you know, once they get saved, to be able to just come together and have good fellowship and not, you right. know, just go – because they come out of lives that are, um, you know, may, may, I mean, you know, we, we, we all weren't born saved. You know what I mean? So, right. so uh, we want to be able to to fellowship together, go out, and, you know, shoot pool or or play um, or bowl or whatever together. And it doesn't matter about your denomination, what church you go to, as long as you are a believer, as long as you are a brother, you are a man. Um, it doesn't matter your affiliation. Just come and spend some time with brothers that can encourage you, pray for you, and um, keep you uplifted. That's what the men of integrity is all about. Now, when did this organization get started? Well, we started back in um, when um, our ministry started. Our ministry started in um, October of 2017. Okay. 2017 is when we actually got started. Um, uh, it might have been 2000. It might have been 2016 actually. And so we started um, doing, you know, getting brothers together, and um, we officially became of the men of integrity back in uh, 2017. Okay. How many uh, active, is there a number of active members that you have in your organization? Right now we have approximately that brothers that are, that, that we can say that are connected with us, connected with us. We have about right around 10 that are connected, that are connected. Okay. Then we have brothers that come in and they help out, when we do our feedings, but, you know, when we have our phone calls and when we do our ministry, um, then there's about, there's about 10 that, that will, uh, that will chime in doing our calls. Okay. Now, Alex, uh, Alex, you're the brother I met at the, uh, DMV, right? Right, right. I'm the, uh, yeah. um, I'm the actual facilitator of the group. I like to call it. I'm the guy that do all the, you know, all the work in behind the scenes, you know, okay. picking up the food, making sure people where they're supposed to be, that kind of thing. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Alex, Alex, that's my homeboy. He's from High Point, North Carolina. Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm proud to be from there too, Steve. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that conversation we had uh, at the DMV. I'm certainly grateful you all had time to come and share with us in the community corner. We appreciate you having us on. Is there any contact information that you can give for my listeners if they want to uh, maybe volunteer or help out? Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. Well, actually, um, we have a a Facebook page. Um, It's uh, Men of Integrity at Facebook.com. You can go on there. You can view all our past feedings that we've done. And, and what the pastor did not share with you guys is that over these last three years, we fed over 2,000 people. And it's not just mm-hmm. a monthly thing. We also, uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas time frame, we gave out whole turkey and ham meals to okay. the community. Now, is there a, a so, set time you do it every month, your monthly feedings, every second Saturday? Is, did you say that earlier? It's from a, um, it's usually the second Saturday of the month from okay. 11 to 2 is where we actually okay. serve food. And, and anybody working, to, like I said, if you're a male or you just got, you know, God in your spirit, anybody's welcome to come out and have a good time and, and be part of it. Now, what is the location? Go ahead, Pastor. We're right off of Murchison Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Murchison Road and Henderson Street is the corner where we normally feed. Um, okay. So, so, so we're out there on the second Saturday. Now, COVID has has kind of stopped us a little bit, you know, kind of slowed us down. But we're in the process of putting some things in place um, to be able to continue to do what it is that we do. Uh, you know, so we have to take precautions. You know, um, a lot of us are a little bit older, so we have to watch our contact. So, right. um, especially now. So um, we're trying to we're trying to figure this whole piece out. Um, because we still have a heart and a burden to be able to feed those that, again, are less fortunate than we are. We've been blessed to be able to do the things that, that we do, and God is always taking care of us, and we want to be able to take care of others, just like um, our, 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 our basic um, uh, our scripture. Our supporting scripture is Matthew 20 and 28, where it says, you know, Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to 
serve. And that's right. what we that's what we're designed to do as men. Um, we're designed to um, to serve. We want to make sure that we're in place um, to be able to serve others. You know, our ministry is built on the fact that you know, oftentimes in in churches, so many times you'll see so many women taking over in places that men are supposed to be. And that right. is where, you know, that's how we came up with um, the men of integrity, because it's one thing for um, us to be in a ministry, but it's, for, it's, it's, it's designed for us to be leaders in the ministry. Our ministry should not flow on the backs of women. Women's right. backs are not made to carry the burdens that we are carrying. And so we should be seen, men should be seen at the forefront. Men should be seen leading and not always following a woman. So, um, and, and I have nothing against women at all. You know that, I mean, but the fact of the matter is that there is a design that God has put in place, and we want to make sure that we are in, in our rightful place as leaders right. and as facilitators. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Alex Scott and Pastor Rick Barber. They are with the nonprofit organization Men of Integrity right here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us in the Community Corner. Amen. Thank you for having us. Stay Amen. tuned. You, All right, my homie. <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for word of word from the Lord radio show. There's a land beyond the river That we call the sweet forever And we only reach that shore by faith's decree One by one we'll gain the portal There to dwell with the immortals When they ring those golden bells For you and me There's a land There's a land beyond the river That we call call forever And we only Reach that shore shore, by best decree. decree, In that far, far, oh, just beyond the shining river. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. Can't you hear? Can't you hear the bells ringing? Oh, can't you hear? Can't you hear? Can't you hear? Well, it's the glory. It's the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jubilee. 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 I'm in that far. In that far, I'll sleep forever. Just beyond. Just beyond the shining river. Oh, when they ring. When they ring the golden bell. Oh, when they ring. When they ring the golden bell, oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell, for you and me, for you and me, oh, can't you hear? Can't you hear the bells ringing? Oh, can't you hear? Can't you hear the angels singing? Well, it's the glory, it's the glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, jubilee, 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 I'm that far. Just beyond, just beyond the shining river. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. Oh, when they ring, when they ring the golden bell. For you and me, for you and me. You're listening to What a Work. From the Lord Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give you a subject from the Word of God entitled Top Three Challenges Facing the Lord's Church. And just briefly this evening, there's a lot of scriptures that I have that are uh, included in this lesson, so I'm not going to be able to read all of these scriptures. So if you're taking notes, please just write these scriptures down and go back and read them at your leisure. We will certainly appreciate that. From the moment, ladies and gentlemen, from the moment that man was created, 
by God. It just seems that Satan has worked to drive a wedge between man and his creator. Yet even before sin entered into the world, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, God has proposed the plan by which man who is separated by sin, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, could be redeemed from sin and reconciled unto God who knows no sin. Genesis 3.15 and Romans 5 and verse 17. Just as the cross was according to God's eternal purpose, another essential component of God's eternal purpose is the Lord's church. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 8 through 11. According to the scriptures, the Lord's church is according to the purpose of God. The prophecies of inspired prophets, Isaiah 2, verses 2 and 3, and Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. The proclamation of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ our Lord, Matthew chapter 3, Verses 1 through 10, and also Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. The promise of Jesus, Matthew 16, verse 13 through 19. And also Mark chapter 9 and verse 1. And it was purchased by the blood of Christ, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. The scriptures also provide a number of designations for the Lord's church, such as the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 through 22, and also Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. The household of faith, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. The temple of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And the vineyard of God, Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 and also used within scriptures and the designation that will be used throughout this lesson is the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 8 and verse 12 and John chapter 18 and verse 36. Now concerning this designation, in short, the Lord's people have been called out of the world just so the term kingdom emphasizes the government features of the Lord's people. Jesus Christ is our king and his people are his subjects. Christ's kingdom is an absolute monarch. Christ is the king and the will of the king is the law. Every citizen kingdom is under a divine obligation to obey the law. And ignorance of the law does not constitute a defense for the violation of the law or for a failure to comply with the law. From the moment the eternal kingdom was established on earth, the kingdom of God has been confronted with challenges. From without, the kingdom of God was and continues to be challenged by persecutions. Acts chapter 8 and verse 1 and Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. While challenges from without is expected, it is the challenges from within that are the most discouraging, most divisive, and destructive. For instance, consider the internal challenges that confronted the Lord's church at Corinth as addressed in 1 Corinthians. Eternal challenges caused by personalities in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11 through 16 and pride in chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. Also chapter 11, 
verse 17 through 34, were the foundation for discouragement and division at Corinth. Just as eternal challenges confronted the kingdom of God in the past, so it is that eternal challenges continue to confront the kingdom of God today. Let's look at the first challenge that confronts the Lord's church today. And that is ignorance. That's right. Ignorance. Historically, one of the things that have challenged the people of God has been ignorance. One is reminded of Judges chapter 2 and verse 10, which declares that following the death of Joshua and the generation that outlived Joshua, listen to the text. There arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, not yet the works which he had done for Israel. As it relates to ignorance, one is also reminded of words spoken by the prophet Hosea. As declared about the people of God, Hosea said in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou had rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. That's Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Of great importance is understanding that knowledge is not only a matter of intellect, but it is also a matter of intimacy. For instance, in John declared, Hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. God's desire is not for his people to merely know about him. His desire is for his people to know him. And sadly, just as ignorance often confronted the people of God throughout the Old Testament, Ignorance often confronts the kingdom of God even today. And such ignorance, whether willful or otherwise, will often lead not only to division among God's people, but more more so division among God and his people. Number one, ignorance concerning the existence of the kingdom. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Number two, ignorance concerning the essential, the essence of the kingdom. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Number three, ignorance concerning the entrance into the kingdom. John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. Number four, ignorance concerning the eternity of the kingdom of God. John chapter 18, verse 36, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 24. And then number five, ignorance concerning leadership in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 Now note, leadership in the kingdom is not a matter of position and power, but a matter of humble service. Sadly, while the list could go on, it is imperative that we not be content in our ignorance concerning the kingdom of God, but rather we seek to understand and appreciate those things concerning the kingdom of God. Beloved, Let us seek ways by which members of the kingdom of God will be better equipped to tell the lost world about the eternal king and his eternal kingdom. Well, let's look at the second challenge facing the Lord's church, and that is involvement. That is involvement. It may very well be that the challenge of involvement is the result of ignorance concerning why one is a member of the kingdom of God, specifically for what purpose 
does one become a member of the kingdom of God? Often the answer given to the question, why did you become a Christian, is so that I can go to heaven. While such an answer is true and good, it does miss an essential component as to why we are Christians. The Apostle Paul declared, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. That's Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. The phrase walk in them denotes that the life we are to live as those created in Christ, i.e. members of the kingdom of God, is to be a life of good works. This includes, but is not limited to, evangelism, Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, and also Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. Also, this includes exhortation, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, and also Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13, and entreating the erring, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, James chapter 19, verses 19, James chapter 5, rather, verse 19 and 20. Ladies and gentlemen, often involvement or lack thereof becomes a challenge to the kingdom of God because of a, that's why we have a preacher and elders mentality. Sadly, when such a mentality is embraced and enabled, many are robbed of the joy of being involved in the work of the Lord because more importantly, many opportunities are neglected to have others added to the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. And then lastly, the third challenge that the Lord's church is facing today, that is immorality. That's immorality. Perhaps no challenge has confronted the kingdom of God more throughout history than immorality. Such was a challenge to the people of God in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. While there are many forms of immorality, the term essentially has reference to sin. Immorality presents a challenge to the kingdom of God because it not only separates the individual from God, it can also result in many others being separated from God as well. Isaiah 59 verses 1 through 15. Another reason why immorality presents a challenge to the kingdom of God is because in many instances, immorality goes unaddressed and undisciplined. Take, for instance, the immorality addressed by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. In this particular instance, not only was fornication among them, it was such that it was not so much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. However, along with fornication, the church at Corinth had been puffed up and have not, not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 2. Because of immorality that had, been, that had gone unaddressed and undisciplined, at stake were the perpetuity of the soul of the sinner, as well as the soul of those who approved or consented of that immorality. Romans chapter 1 and verse 32 purity of the Lord's church, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ladies and gentlemen, while there are many objections today concerning addressing and disciplining those who refuse to repent of immorality, scriptures is clear concerning the attitude and actions that the kingdom of God must have towards such. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 through 14. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 
through chapter 6, verse 2. So in conclusion of this lesson, ladies and gentlemen, yes, there are also many challenges that exist within the kingdom of God today. The aforementioned challenges are among those from within which we must address and overcome. If we desire to be part of the kingdom when Christ presents it to his father, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 24, may we have the humility to do just that. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side of the break to extend unto you the Lord's invitation. Stay tuned. It ain't all good, but it's going to be good. Because I love him. I'm on it. But I'm doing fine. And I trust him. Everything ain't well. But it's going to be swell. In the fullness of time. Everything's going to be fine. Whoa. In the fullness of time. Everything. Sometimes I feel like I'm a run-down man, but I'm looking up where I know him. I'm trying to be holy. I want to be worthy. So So he'll know me. I look around me and it seems like evil wins. In the fullness of time. try to do this on every show because we just don't know who are, who's listening to this show because it's on the internet and the internet has taken wings all over the world so people have an opportunity to hear the preaching and teaching 
of the word of God. And if you're not a child of God, and this is important, if you're not a child of God and one cannot be a child of God until you are a Christian, until you have been born again, as the Bible teaches, then you are lost outside of Christ. It's not enough to be religious. You must obey the commands of the Lord. In order for a man to be saved, you must take heed and answer the gospel call. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse 14. You must hear the gospel. John chapter six and verse 45. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 17. And the facts of the gospel are the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. You must believe the same. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. James chapter 2 and verse 24. You must repent. Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. You must confess your faith in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. You must be baptized in water for the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts 10 and verse 48. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. And if you are a Christian and you have not been faithful in your service to God, we would ask that you decide again. By repentance and prayer, Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. And we want to encourage you now to visit the churches of Christ in your area. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side of the break. I'm going home. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going home. 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 Said I am going, going home to see my Lord. Going on. Going home. Yes, I am. See my Lord. Oh, oh, oh. One of these moments that won't be long. Y'all gonna look for me. I'll be going on home. I'm gonna fly away to a better place. I can hardly wait. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I'm going Don't home. worry about me. I'm going, going home. Home. I'm going on home. To see, my Lord. see the king. I'm going oh, oh, oh. I'm going hey, home. said I am going, going home. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going home. Going on home. home. Going on to home. See my Lord. One more thing. Mm-hmm. All of my loved ones. Mm-hmm. Going on before. Y'all go see them again. Oh, on the other shore and we will be Do me one favor and tell them for me. Hey, tell them y'all going on. Tell them for me. Tell them going on. And I got one question to ask you to see. Don't you want to go home? 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 Said I want to go home. Said I want to go home. Said I want to go home. I want to go home. Yeah, cause I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Way up in the sky where we will never die. To watch the tears from my eyes. No more, 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 Thank 
touch his hand. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speaker, Carlos D. Page, did an outstanding job in the first segment. His lesson was entitled, We We Got to Keep Moving. Certainly appreciate his efforts on the broadcast this evening. And also in the community corner, my special guest was Alice Scott and Pastor Rick Barber. They have a nonprofit organization called Men of Integrity where they're feeding the homeless here in the city of Fayetteville. Certainly appreciate uh, the work that they're doing among our community. Also, I appreciate everyone who participated on the show this evening. What a blessing. What a what a blessing it is my prayer that these lessons this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives. And your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you're not only tuning into this broadcast, but you've given yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And on behalf of my co-hosts, Edward Bishop and Lou Gibbers, we really do appreciate your love and support for these programs. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. Say yeah, there's no better state to be in. Yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, there's no better state to be in. Yeah. Say yeah, I confess, I feel somewhat guilty in my happiness. There's a public spirit in me Some wonder how can he smile How he reached into the darkest black and found me Oh.
From the Lord Radio Show, episode 164. I'm going to keep on climbing this mountain till I reach high ground. Hey, turn around. Turn around. Oh, no. No, I ain't going to stop now. Anybody out there? So the storm with both. Having tried and tribulation. I just want to encourage keep you keep moving on, keep moving on. I, I need home. somebody who's been through something Help me now I've had some ups and downs so Hard times in my life I've had to watch so many tears from my weeping night. I know the pain will last only for a night That's why I'll hold on till the morning light You see the suffering we're going through It don't compare the treasures that are waiting for us all the day. I gotta keep on climbing though sometimes we make it hard. But we ain't gonna stop till we reach the top. The devil tries to make us think there is no way out. Maybe you lost the one that was close to you. Maybe you're sick and there's nothing you can do. Oh, yeah. Just keep your eyes to the sky. When times get hard, keep pressing toward the prize. Oh, you see, I'm trying. They won't last for long. They only make them so they gotta keep on. Higher ground. 